Time is short. What is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Opportunity comes in chaos. A chance to stand up. A chance to get it right. A chance to make a U-turn. It may not be for everybody. It is how you perceive the chaos, whether you determine it to be opposition or opportunity. Time also calls for immediate action. The fact that time is short calls for something now. It may not be a tomorrow for you because there's a warning to time. Time is running out for all of us. Time is too short for indecision and vacillation. Do not halt between two opinions. Fools say that time is long. The saddest thing I have ever seen is a wasted opportunity. I've seen people misunderstand the opportunity, pollute it with arrogance or self-aggrandizement, and lose the opportunity. And that's what's going to make your death so sad is that you never live first. You never fully engage. You never fully studied. You never fully invested in anything or anybody. You want to get something that you are not willing to give. Compromise your virtues and your values. Listen to me, you have been given an opportunity. You have been given an opportunity of a lifetime. And if you think you're going to blow up, if you think you're going to get to the next level by luck, you got another thing coming. It may not be for everybody, but what God has given to you is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. By not being prepared, you make the choice of getting caught in some of life's unpleasant circumstances. Failures, economic losses, relationship losses, personal losses. By not being prepared, it's your choice. Now here's the other side of it. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success, of seizing opportunities when they come your way, of being ready within yourself to take advantage of once-in-a-lifetime situations. Some people tend to blame others for their mistakes. Somebody says, it's not my fault the report isn't done. So-and-so didn't do their part. Of course it's your fault. It's your report too. It's your responsibility to see that everyone you delegated work to does their part. Now, you can't control what others around you do, but it's in your own best self-interest that you stay on top of things, especially if it's going to affect your future. Concentration takes a lot of discipline. Concentrate on the work at hand and demand of yourself the discipline to stay focused. If you have a long list of things to get done within a day, do the toughest ones while your concentration is at its peak. If you're a morning person, get the job done in the morning. Don't wait until the evening when your energy is all spent. If you're a night person, save those tough jobs for the night, not in the morning when you've still got cobwebs in your brain. Learn your body's rhythms and do the jobs that need the most concentration when you're able to do them best. When you're at work, be at work. When you're at your kid's school play or soccer game or dance recital, be there. Don't let your mind wander. Stay focused. Don't let your mind wander during conversations. You never know what important points you'll miss. Stay focused. Use your discipline to keep your mind in line. When you recognize the need to concentrate more, when you recognize this need, it will come easier and easier. Focused concentration can become a habit. If you work on it a little every day, every day, every day, the easier it comes, the less energy you'll waste on making your mind mind you. Number one cornerstone of an ambitious person, concentration, focused concentration. Make your mind pay attention. Discipline yourself to be where you are. Work at work and play at play. Don't mix the two. Concentrate. Give your job the attention it deserves. Give your family the attention they deserve. Wherever you are, be there. Concentrate. When you look at over 33 million people 
have lost their job. It's greater than the last depression, the unemployment rate. This is unprecedented. There, this trauma that's going on all across the country and things are happening globally. It affects all of us. There are things that we can do and things that we must do to pick ourselves up and move ourselves forward. Success is not final and failure is not fatal. We all have the challenge to search deep within ourselves to find our inner hunger, which is our power. When things go wrong, we have to find ways to anchor ourselves. We cannot allow ourselves and give ourselves permission to go with them. And so if your life isn't everything it could be, you could ask yourself, well, what would happen if you just stopped wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? You'd be who knows how much more efficient, 10 times more efficient. You have no idea how efficient, efficient people get. Well, and if we all got our act together collectively and stop making things worse, because that's another thing people do all the time, not only do they not do what they should to make things better, they actively attempt to make things worse because they're spiteful or resentful or arrogant or deceitful or homicidal or genocidal or all of those things all bundled together in an absolutely pathological package. If people stop really, really trying just to make things worse, we have no idea how much better they would get just because of that. So there's this weird dynamic that's part of the existential system of ideas between human vulnerability, both of which are, are major causes of suffering, and the failure of individuals to adopt the responsibility that they know they should adopt. You know, there's this idea that people have a conscience. And you know what the conscience is. It's, it's this feeling or voice you have in your head just before you do something that you know is stupid, telling you that probably you shouldn't do that stupid thing. You don't have to listen to it, strangely enough. But you go ahead and do it anyways, and then, of course, exactly what the conscience told you was going to happen inevitably happens so that you feel even stupider about it than you would if it happened by accident. Because you, you know, I knew this was going to happen, and I went and did it anyways. And the funny thing, too, is that that conscience operates within people, and we really don't understand what the hell that is. Now, my approach to my better future very early on in my career was to just go through the day with my fingers crossed. I sure hope things will change for the better. Then here's what I found out. They're not going to change. When you change, when you get better, it'll get better. If you change, it'll all change. Don't put it on someone else. Hope that someone else will change it for you. Take responsibility for yourself. You can't change the circumstances or the seasons or the wind, but you can change your reading habits. You can change whether or not you go for the skills. Multiply your value by two, three, five, ten. That you've got charge of. That you have control of. You don't have control of the constellations. Learn some new skills. You have control over that. And if you don't, that's your fault. You've got to take personal responsibility. You've got to be self-reliant. Nobody else can change your life, alter your ambitions, pave a golden road for you. It's up to you. Be responsible for yourself. Learn to reap the harvest without complaint. And here's where it comes from, taking full responsibility. Take full responsibility for everything you do. Be responsible to yourself. It's your crop. Potential is an interesting idea because it represents something that isn't yet real, yet we act like it's real. Because people will say to you, you should live up to your potential. And that potential is partly what you could be if you interacted with the world in a manner that would gain you the most information. Because you build yourself out of the information in the Piagetian sense. But it's deeper than that too, because we know that if you take yourself and you put yourself in a new environment, new genes turn on in your nervous system. They encode for new proteins. 
you're full of biological potential that won't be realized unless you move yourself around in the world into different challenging circumstances and that'll turn on different circuits. It's that by exposing yourself to different environments you put different physiological demands on yourself all the way down to the genetic level and that manifests new elements of you because you take yourself out of your dopey little village and that's just the little bounded you that everyone knows and that isn't very expanded and then you go somewhere dark and dangerous to the central place and while you do that you have adventures and they toughen you and pull more out of you partly because you're becoming informed which means information it means you're becoming more organized at every level of analysis but there's also more of you too what do you do when you tried and failed and you want to quit and you want to give up because trying again means hurting again means risking again means believing again means hoping again sometimes you can be blessed and be unhappy because even though things are going right they're not going according to what you had believed and expected and you know that something is missing out of your life what do you do when something is missing out of your life and the things that replaced it do not compensate for what you lost I've always been told how average I can be always been criticized about being average but I want to tell you something I stand here before you not listening to those words but telling myself every single day to shoot for the stars to be the best that I can be good enough isn't good enough if it can be better and better isn't good enough if it can be best turn your wounds into wisdom you will be wounded many times in your life. You'll make mistakes. Some people will call them failures. But I have learned that failure is really God's way of saying, excuse me, you're moving in the wrong direction. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Think about that. If you aren't dead, then it's just psychological. Does not mean that you won't lose some battles because you will. We all will. But it does mean that as long as you don't surrender, as long as you don't give up, as long as you don't quit, then you haven't failed. It just means you've made a temporary tactical retreat, a brief withdrawal so that you can regroup and reattack. If you get beat, unless you're dead, you are not defeated. And you have not failed. What you've done is you've learned. You've gained experience. And you're still alive. So get up and go get after it. We all live in this bubble. What you got to do to get the life that God wants you to have, you got to put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Put some more air in your bubble. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. You will fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. People say you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing and it's totally true and the reason is because it's so hard that if you don't any rational person would give up it's really hard and you have to do it over a sustained period of time so if you don't love it if you're not having fun doing it you don't really love it you're gonna give up and that's what happens to most people actually if you really look at, at the ones that ended up you know being successful unquote in the eyes of society and the ones that didn't oftentimes it's the ones that are successful loved what they did so they could persevere you know when it got really tough and the ones that didn't love it quit so it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of worrying constantly if you don't love it you're gonna fail so you gotta love it you gotta have passion if you think ordinary is cool ain't no problem it's some really wonderful ordinary people but if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations then you're gonna have to do extra 
You put extra on top of ordinary and you come up with extraordinary. It's no other way. But here's the fact. All of you have extraordinary capabilities. All of you. You have to decide if you are willing to do the things to put you in that category. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. He who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. You don't have to live worried, focused on the problems, wondering why it happened. You know a secret, you have favor in the storm. You know what was meant for harm, he's turning to your advantage. Here's the key. The enemy wouldn't be fighting you if you weren't a threat. So oh, get ready. Favor is about to turn things around. Favor is about to catapult you to a new level. Favor is not going to keep you from the storm, but favor will bring you out of the storm. We don't understand everything that happens. Sometimes life is not fair, but you have to trust that God knows what he's doing. This thing called life, you just don't know what the next moment will bring. But here's what I do know, and I want you to know, you have comeback power. When something happens to you, don't buy into what has happened to you. Buy into, I'm getting up out of here. I'm gonna change this situation. This does not work for me, and I don't have the luxury of being depressed and angry. I need to clear my head. This is no time to do something stupid, like hurt yourself. No, 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 no. So get serious about your goals, business goals, financial goals, financial independence goals, family goals. I mean, there's so many things to work on on this. But if you don't get busy and work on it, sure enough, the time will pass. And sure enough, five years from now, you'll wind up where you don't want to be, wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, being what you don't want to be. Now's the time to fix it. Your goals are affecting you, whatever they are. Your goals affect your attitude, personality. All day long, we're being affected by our goals. You got to clear your head so that the decision that you make represents the best in you. People who don't stop to clear their heads, they react. They don't respond. Be still and know that you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. And you don't want to be radical. You don't want to be erratic. Just be still and know, I'm going to get through this. You got to assure yourself. You have to encourage yourself. You have to clear your mind. Your better future is a dream. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to see? You've got to dream dreams. Without dreams and visions, people perish. You've got to have something to go for. Take the crumbs from starving soldiers, they won't die. Take the bread from hungry children, they won't cry. But without dreams, we all will die. You've got to dream. Don't lose your dream. Becoming something unique on your journey here, don't lose your dream. That's long range goals. You've got to have those. Because if you set up something short range, go for it, get it, latch, latch onto it, work hard, accomplish it. That starts building your strong feelings to go for your dreams. Economics plays a major role in everybody's life, which means it ought to be meticulously well planned for tomorrow. An area of life that matters clearly to all of us is time. And most people have very little mastery of this. I don't mean checking things off your list. I'm meaning squeezing out of your life what matters to you most. Your career, where is it now? And where are you financially compared to where you want to be? And especially with some of the changes that have happened in the economies around the world. And then finally, where are you in your level of sense of meaning, of contribution, and your sense of celebration in life? These are the areas that really matter most. Sit down and define what this looks like for you today. And invariably what we find out is almost everybody has some gaps. Gaps between where you are and where you want to be. And even if you've done incredibly well, I mean, I deal with some of the most successful people in the world, they're usually still happy in their life because they're hungry. They haven't lost that drive that says, look, what makes me feel...
live is to know I'm growing. You know, if my life's going to get better, I got to get better. I can't just hope it. And if my life is going to be rich emotionally, it's got to be expanding. And they know that. If you work your tail off at work to take care of your family and be the best at what you can do, if your career's going really well. Isn't that the nature of human beings? To me, successful is getting to the point where you are absolutely comfortable with yourself. It does not matter how many things you have acquired. Uh, the ability to learn to say no and not to feel guilty about it, to me, is about the greatest success I have achieved. Uh, the fact that I have, you know, in the public side, done whatever, it's all a part of a process for growing for me. But to me, to have the, in, the kind of internal strength and internal courage it takes to say, no, I will not let you treat me this way is what success is all about. I will not be treated this way. I demand only the best for myself. We tend to focus on things we feel confident in, we know what to do in, and the other stuff we kind of hope it all comes together and try not to think about it too much, but it all affects us. You gotta start with what it is you really truly want now. You gotta start with that end in mind. And then once you understand there is a gap between where you are and where you wanna be, here's all we do. We believe that the most powerful way to change anything is total immersion. 